Welcome to the podcast. This is Christine. This is the Frugal Fit Mom podcast. And today I am so excited to be interviewing a good friend of mine, Mary Beth, from the YouTube channel At What Cost and the website, the At What Cost blog. I would say Mary Beth specializes in faith based decluttering and minimalism. This podcast is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. And I also have a video version on YouTube. The YouTube channel is the Frugal Fit Mom podcast. So if you prefer having it on video and watching, it is also available there, or you can pick it up anywhere else you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, whatever, and listen to it in your car. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it if you would do that. And if you are enjoying it, leave us a review. It helps other people find us because we are pretty new. Without further ado, let's head on over and chat with Mary Beth. Mary Beth, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you for having me. This is so fun. I'm so glad you were willing to come and talk with me again. <laughs> Round two, take two. <laughs> because we had some audio issues in, in the last episode. So this is do over. Okay. So for the people who don't know you, you know, I've told them that you have a YouTube channel. You're at 25,000 subscribers. It's called at what cost. If yeah. they came to your channel, what would they find? So I try to have a healthy balance of simplifying home. So we focus a lot on family minimalism, but through a faith-based lens. So I think that the elevator pitch is really to, to really let the changes that are happening in our hearts with our faith translate into what's happening in our homes. So it sounds to me like you're a fan of the concept that people can change. Yeah, absolutely. I've had people tell me, I think they mean it as an insult, right? But they're like, wow, you've changed, right? And <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of like, isn't that the point? Isn't that what's great about growing up and maturing and I'm allowed to change my mind. Like I'm, I'm allowed yeah. to get better and grow. And I love that as a concept just in general. So I'm a big fan of that concept that you're pushing also. So how did you find minimalism? Cause I don't think that's something people are typically raised with. Yeah, I don't think so either. So I found it really accidentally. I was not looking to really have any of the, the changes that have happened since then. So initially I was looking for a laundry system. I was totally overwhelmed with everything in our home. And I did what everyone who is kind of in my, uh, in your generation do. And I went to Pinterest and I didn't find anything. So then I went to YouTube and I found all of these things and some of the systems were just so complicated and i kept thinking like the answer to having all of this stuff to deal with can't be add more stuff and so i clicked on a video from a youtuber i'm not sure if you've heard of her she's not very well known but okay, uh, Dawn, the minimal mom oh <laughs> right? wait i i just had her on the podcast yes <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, she's, people know, yes. some people, but... Maybe, no, maybe I, some people would know. <laughs> I found, I actually think it was like one of the second or third videos that she had ever done on YouTube, and it was about her laundry system, and she said it was the most profound thing, but the most simple thing, and having just all of that overwhelm, she just said, did you know you didn't have to have all this stuff. And I was like sitting literally in the middle of all of my laundry piles because that's where my laundry lived was on the couch. And I was looking around thinking like, no, I had no idea. I thought that we had to have the matching Easter outfits and the Christmas outfits and the outfits for family pictures and all of the donations that people had given us. And it just, it blew my mind in the absolute best way. And I think I watched like every video that I could get my hands on about family minimalism because it just, I don't know, it's just an answer, very much an answer to prayer. How, how long ago was this? So that was about four, four years ago. I have so many questions I want to ask. <laughs> I don't know where to start. <laughs> this is going to sound so dumb. This is not the minimalism thing. This is the laundry system thing. <laughs> is this so dumb? My question is, what system is there other than wash the clothes and put them away? Like, right? Isn't that yeah. every, 
wash the clothes and then put them away. However you end up doing it, you do one load a day, you save it all for one day, whatever system it is, it's wash and put away. Is that not the system? Yeah. This is like analogy on the fly. So let's say you're bowling, right? How many pins do you have at the end of the lane? 10. 10, right? right? It's, it's 10, right? And I don't bowl very often. Yes. Let's go with 10 because I'm not an expert in bowling. I'm just like on the fly here. So let's say hypothetically there's 10 and those little contraptions that they have to reset the pins have 10 spots. So every time you knock them down, there are 10 little spots to put the pins back. But what happens when you put 11 and 12 and 13 and 14 and 20 and 30 into those spaces? It totally overwhelms the system. So regardless of like what the system is, wash, dry, fold, and put away sounds so easy for one load or two loads. When all of our laundry was dirty, everything, when all of the hampers were full, I had 14 loads of laundry. So every time someone ran out of underwear, I had 14 loads of laundry to do. Mm -hmm. And so it became this just never ending cycle that I couldn't catch up on. And eventually, and I, I feel very strongly that a lot of it was just very much spiritual warfare. I felt so just overwhelmed and I felt like a failure. Like I couldn't do the most simple thing, like take care of my kids clothing so how would I ever be successful in taking care of anything else that they needed? I, I, it made me feel like a failure. I just want to be clear. I am no good at laundry. And what oh. I mean by that is I, I actually enjoy the washing process. I'm fine with hanging up the wet clothes to dry, like on a line. I don't mind that. It's the putting away that is my stumbling block. And it doesn't matter if it's one load. It doesn't matter if it's three things. It doesn't matter if it's 10, it doesn't matter. I don't want to do it. I don't yeah. want to put the clothes away. I don't know what that is about me. It's a personal flaw probably. But to me, I'm just thinking like, what system would fix the fact that I'm lazy and I don't want to put away three socks? There isn't one. I just have to get over myself and put away three socks. People can change. There's hope for you, Christine. There's hope. <laughs> at, at this point, I'm probably too stubborn to change. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do with your laundry? I let it sit in a pile in a yeah. basket in my room and I dig through it. Yeah. And then once a week when I can't take it anymore, I dump it all out on the bed and I watch TV while I put it away. And I'm like, ah, oh. and then I do more laundry the next day and the cycle starts all over again. Yeah. You have a, you've <laughs> built a routine around it though, right? Like, and it works yeah, for yeah. you. And it's okay. <laughs> this, this is my laundry routine. Let it sit in a basket until you watch TV. <laughs> Know that you can like put that on a printable and like send it out to people though <laughs> but it's so relatable right isn't, isn't that yeah, it's true. like yes me too me too yeah. okay i think your story about your becoming a mother is super interesting yeah so i kind of want to go back to that so you said you found the minimalism train four years ago but you adopted yeah. three boys all at once so you went yeah. basically from zero to three kids like this so how long ago was that we're coming up on seven years. Wow. So we just, pa we're passing all of these like milestones right now. So February 17th, 2015, we get a phone call and we just jumped head first off of the high dive into parenting and we haven't looked back. <laughs> At what point in going from zero to three, can I just say props? Major <laughs> Props because I did mine one at a time. Yeah. At what point, like how far into it were you like, wow, what have I gotten myself into? Yeah. Like three days. It was very early on and I don't want to, you know, I always I actually was talking with a friend this last weekend because they're getting ready to open a foster care license. And, you know, she hears a lot of horror stories, right? Just kind of like the context. So we adopted our three boys through foster care. So we did have a period of time when we were kind of like what I kind of think of as like fake parenting. 
Like we were making all the decisions, but we had all this oversight and all of this support and people checking in. And that was wonderful because it was, we went from zero to three overnight. And I was thinking through like, what would I tell people about this? And how was this experience? I don't, it, it was really, really hard, but it was also so good, but I didn't know it at the time. So like three days in, my husband and I are just looking at each other like, what day is it? Are we, are we at our house? Where's, have we eaten? Did we feed them? I won't ever forget the first night that we actually had all three of our boys in the house and they were spending the night. We got everybody into bed. We're looking around. My husband like flops down in the recliner. He's exhausted and he turns the TV on and he's looking at it and he's totally bewildered. He's like, is Jeopardy running a rerun? Why would Jeopardy be on at like 10 o'clock? And I'm like looking at my watch and I'm like, dude, it's 730. It's 730. <laughs> you could just see that was the tone of what was happening. It was just pure pandemonium. But even though it's been super hard and we face a lot of challenges, even seven years now, we have had a lot of hurdles to overcome. Our kids have had a lot of hurdles to overcome and there's still a long way to go. But it's so, so good. It's so good. I love my family. I love my kids and I'm loving the journey now. I didn't always feel that way. I have kind of like my motherhood struggles, <laughs> but yeah, right now, oh, it's so good. I think a lot of moms can relate to the whole, this is hard. I'm kind of struggling with X, Y, Z, whatever it is, especially as a stay at home mom. Let me take that back. That's not fair. I've done all of it. I've done the stay at home full-time gig. I've done the side hustle stay at home gig. I've done the work outside of the home gig and work from home gig. I've done them all. Yeah. And I will yeah. tell you, they're all hard in their own way. <laughs> but I, I also went through a period, not in the beginning, kind of in the middle where I just felt like, what was I doing with my life? You know what I mean? Like I was a stay at home mom full time and I had been doing it for 10 plus years. And, and I'm kind of like, do I matter? Do I make yeah. a difference ever? And it was kind of a dark time for me, which is when I started working outside the home and I learned so much in those two years that I did that. And I realized that I didn't want to do that. And my whole perspective changed. If you were to tell a mother who's maybe going through a hard time, like I described her, or maybe like you went through, what advice would you give them? What would you say to them to help them out if they're just feeling down or maybe live if they don't matter or they're overwhelmed or guilty or whatever it is? Yeah, I definitely faced a lot of that. And the bigger question I had a lot of times was, who am I? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not that person that I was before I had kids and I kind of miss her. And when it comes to advice with like new moms, I think something that has been helpful for me, and I, I don't know how helpful it is for everyone else, but for me, kind of someone who was a lot further down the journey said, it won't always be like this. So true. And it stuck with me because, you know, it cuts both ways. Mm -hmm. the, it really forces you to look at the good and the bad. Like, it won't always be like this. Yeah, I am so loving the stage that my kids are in right now. And I didn't always feel that way. And a year from now, they may not be in those same stages. And I'm really going to miss this. So just that idea of like, it's, it's not always going to be like this. You know, it gives you both hope for the future. Like things are, you know, we talked about change, like things are going to change. The circumstances are going to change. Their development is going to change. Things are going to change and it won't always be exactly like it is, but it's also very sobering. We can kind of, I think when we're overwhelmed, start to feel like everything is just whizzing by. And it's a very sobering thought to kind of think like, it's not always going to be like this. I may want to stop and enjoy the view for a few minutes. I, I really love that because I think that's super true. I get asked a lot of questions from young mothers with young children, toddlers, babies, really hard stage. And yeah. they don't know how to 
fit in anything for them. They don't know how to find a hobby or how do I exercise? And like, I take my kids hiking and on trips and they're like, I don't know how to do that. And I was like, but I didn't when they were those ages, like I I was sucked into the toddler baby and it wasn't always like that. It changes as the kids grow and as they get more capable, you move on to a different stage. You're so right. It's not always like that. I have so many thoughts about that. Uh, My oldest is 18, graduates from high school in three months. Uh, (laughs) Sometimes I just like stare at her and I hope she doesn't catch me being a creeper because I just want to like take in the moment. Yeah. I hear, I hear that right of, of when she goes and I'm not, I'm not sad about it necessarily. I'm so excited for her to experience the next stage. Cause that's the point she's supposed to go yeah. and be her own person and create her own family and her own life. But at the same time, I just love her to death. And I, like, I'm just going to miss having her around. Right. Yeah. And so I try to do that. Just like take it in, in the moment. There's something else I want to say that I don't know if it fits very well in here, but it made me think about what you said. Cause it won't always be like this. Yeah. I just want to take it in. So I have had some health issues in the last month. I've been to the doctor many times. I've had many scans done. So I'm on my like third doctor to look at my scans and go over my stuff. And they see this abnormality on my bone in my hip. And like the radiologist had written like some kind of lesion or whatever. And the doctor's like, oh, that's like, I'm sitting right there. He's like, oh, that's so weird. This just happened a week ago. Usually they wouldn't write that unless it was cancer. And I'm like, (laughs) no. My mom had cancer in her forties. So I'm very diligent about cancer screening. I think it's important. Yeah. And I'm like having a panic attack in the doctor's chair for like five minutes. And just like, five sorry. minutes. Yeah. Just I, the five minutes. That was it. Well, he kind of backtracked it and, and he yeah. was like, he was like, I don't think it, I think it's just a bone cyst and blah, blah, blah. I should have an orthopedic look at it. And I was like, I have an orthopedic surgeon lives across the street from my house that I'm friends with. I'm calling him right now to look at my skin. Yeah. And we talked and it was fine. They were like, we see these all the time. It's just a bone cyst. And I'm, but for five minutes, maybe 10, I'm like, are you telling me I have bone cancer? Like, is that yeah. what you're saying to me right now? In my head, this is what I was thinking. Like, have I done enough? Have, have I lived enough? Have I told the people I love, like how much I love them enough? Yeah. And the answer is no. Every question I asked myself was no. And that was a week ago. But since then, I've been thinking about it constantly. Like, have I lived enough? Have I lived enough to hear news like that? Like, have I lived Mm -hmm. enough to have it be over suddenly? And I was like, no, the answer is no. So just in the last week, I have really been thinking about that. Like, it won't always be like today's. (laughs) So I'm like, bone cancer, bone cancer, like, rolling around in my head and it freaked me out. Mary Beth, it yeah. freaked me out. I'm fine. Yeah. But just the possibility was through me big time. Yeah. It's one of those sobering moments where, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of, you know, it's so cliche, but they're like, oh, your life, my life flashed before my eyes, but it actually kind of does. You're faced with your own mortality and that can mm-hmm. be a very scary thing. It really can be. It almost even wasn't that like I wasn't going to be around. It was like my family, my kid, my kids can't not have a mom. My husband can't yeah. be alone. He hates it when I go for the weekend. Like this is yeah. not going to work. <laughs> yeah. It's so sobering and it really helps us to figure out our priorities when things like that happen, because like that's your first thought. And so it really says a lot about your role in your family. Like you are the caregiver, you are involved, you see the value of the relationships. And, you know, I think that really, that says a lot about how your family feels about you too. Those are the things that you're kind of going to is like, well, what about this? And what about that? And so it helps us to kind of have that perspective because now moving forward, you you just have a different perspective and you can maybe walk in a different way, even, even though you're not walking, like, it's not about like, I was not doing enough before, or I need to do things differently now, but it just gives you a different perspective moving forward. And I think sometimes that's the change that we need to really 
get ourselves to a different place that sometimes we didn't even know we needed to be in. A lot of that is what really kind of happened for me with that like laundry video. It was something that was like so off the radar. I didn't know that people didn't live like I was living. And I think what the worst part is I was so, I mean, Christine, if I had to be just completely transparent, I was despising my motherhood. I was so overwhelmed and I was so frustrated. And I kept thinking like, I know that God is calling us to raise this family. I know that he wants for us to parent these children. Why would he bring us to this place and then just leave me in these negative, terrible feelings? Like this is awful. This isn't at all what I wanted motherhood to be. And so I'm thinking like everybody else lives this way. I must be doing something wrong because they seem to be doing everything right. Everything seems to be fine for them. Surely no one else would feel this way. And I think, you know, just kind of moving into this space and meeting other people who are struggling with the same things. They just didn't know someone else was also struggling with those things. And so it just, I don't know, it gives you that perspective shift. Like I would have never, ever thought about walking into this kind of space but it was exactly the change that I needed. So yours started with laundry. So is that the first thought that you started decluttering was clothes? Yeah. Yeah, I went nuts. I started with my kids' clothes because that was the biggest pain point. That was the thing I was struggling with the worst. And I felt like if I could get that under control, then I could move on to something else and see where else it took me. So with our kids' clothes, I probably got rid of if I had to really do the math, it was probably 85, maybe 90%. I mean, we went bare bones. I didn't throw everything away or donate it. I just packed it up and I set it off to the side to mm -hmm. see like, how is this going to work for the next, I think it was a good month, maybe, maybe longer that I really wanted us to live with as little as we could. And my kids were an easy experiment because they don't care. Like they really don't care. And that may not be true for everybody. I know some people's kids are very particular about what they wear. My kids are like gym shorts, t-shirts, pajamas, and they're happy. So we went down to one or two outfits for church, four or five outfits to get them through the week, a couple of pairs of pajamas. And that was really it for a long time. We did that for a long time. And eventually I donated... I think it was 11 of those like 48 quart bins of clothes to our local foster care closet. Wow. Yeah. We had 11 of those totes just of my children's current wardrobe. That wasn't, wow. that wasn't their, their back sizes and stuff that I had been hanging on to. That was their current wardrobe that we were able to pass along. That's amazing. So you did the clothes and then where did you go next? The next place I went was our kitchen. Mm -hmm. Laundry and dishes were the two things that were really hanging me up the most. So I was spending all of my time doing laundry. And if I wasn't spending all of my time doing laundry, I was spending all my time doing dishes. So I went into the kitchen. I got rid of really all of the extra stuff that I knew we were not using. I honestly could not tell you how much we really got rid of. I wasn't as diligent about keeping track of that. It was definitely a little bit slower process than it was with the clothes. So I wasn't taking, you know, giant bins of kitchen stuff out, but I was kind of systematically going through it. And we went down to as many dishes as would fit in the dishwasher so that I knew if every dish, every plate and bowl and, and cup was dirty, it could all go in the dishwasher at night and I could put it away in the morning. There was not a lot of extra. And that worked really, really, really well. We float back and forth, you know, things come into our home. Mm -hmm. They get this like fun little cup at a birthday party and it hangs around for a little while. But ultimately we do reach a tipping point where I know like, okay, we got too many things and we got to make some choices because not everything fits in the dishwasher. And I, 
just don't want to spend all my time hand washing dishes. And I also don't want to leave a dirty kitchen. Like that doesn't feel good either. So we kind of, we reach that tipping point and then it's like, okay, we got to get rid of some stuff here. What do you like to cook for your family for dinner? What's a family favorite? Oh gosh. Go to, I... go to family favorite. It's not fancy. That's okay. It's not that's fancy a, at said, all. Who said it has to be fancy? <laughs> but like, don't we think that like, that's what our families are going to love are these like wonderfully fancy meals? No, my kids they don't. I pull out a package of frozen corn dogs and they're like, <laughs> yes, I haven't had these in six months. <laughs> yeah. So sort of along those lines. So I'll take tater tots and put those in a pan. And then I put, I'm sorry, I totally got the, the order backwards. Sliced hot dogs in the pan. Okay, sliced hot dogs. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cover it mm -hmm. with some uh, canned Hormel chili. Yes, and then top that with going. some tater tots and some and some cheddar cheese. And my kids are like, tater tot chili dog casserole. <laughs> they're, they're, Hold up. I'm, they're I'm putting that in my notes. I am making that next week. That's oh, what I'm that's doing. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I live in Georgia, so casseroles are my comfort food. That is my love language, <laughs> is a good casserole. <laughs> What's your favorite casserole? Is it this one? Oh, no, I really love, my dad used to make it. It's rice and mushrooms and broccoli and chicken in like a, you know, cream of mushroom, sour cream kind of sauce. And then he would put it in a casserole dish and bake it. And it was Yes. Oh, so good. So that good. That sounds similar to my grandpa's chicken and rice casserole. A little different, a little similar. Yeah. What do you guys normally have for breakfast? Are you like a cereal, Pop-Tart? I don't care what you eat. Here's, here's some stuff. Especially during the week, we are quick and easy. I've got three kids who are at three different schools, and they all ride the bus, so they got to get out the door. And it ranges really. They love those uh, pancakes on a stick. The like sausage yep. covered in like a corn dog. They'll do like toaster waffles. And then sometimes they're like real easy and they have a yogurt and a granola bar and they're out the door. But on the weekends, we like to have like a good breakfast with eggs mm -hmm. and hash browns and bacon. A full fry up. I started talking about food and <laughs> so this is and our the dog, dog comes over. <laughs> Gunner's kind of a, a regular crasher of the channel. He's become a little bit iconic. <laughs> I started talking about food and he was like, are we eating that? I'm in. That's <laughs> hilarious that he like recognized that you're talking about food. <laughs> if you don't want to share this, just say so. And I'll cut this whole part out. Okay. Would you be willing to share a monthly grocery budget with the listeners? Like what do you spend on groceries for a family of five in Georgia? I'll be really you know? honest. I have no idea. You don't know. <laughs> I don't do any of our grocery shopping and I don't do any of our budgeting. Brian does all of that. I am. You literally have no idea. I literally have no idea. Okay. I can guess. So I would say we probably spend, I would say probably between six and $700 a month. But I think that would also include like some of our eating out, not all of it, but some of it. But yeah, I think that would have to be my fair guess. Is that a lot or a little? Based on the types of foods you're saying that you're eating, I was going to guess $200 a week on average. Oh yeah. Which would be about yeah. 800 a month, give or take a little bit. Based on the things that you're talking about, that sounds pretty average to me. Mine's weirdly low and I'm aware of that. That's kind of your thing, right? Like kind of my thing. Be. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, some people think that like I'm lying or that they, they can't do what I do based on where they live, oh. which I just have not found to be the case. I've traveled a lot, California. I was in Phoenix last weekend. I was in Texas during the fall and I, I see good prices everywhere. It's just a different style of yeah. shopping and eating that I've just been doing for a long time. So I can see how that would be challenging. Well, but I think a lot of it too comes down to the choices that you're willing to make and the places mm -hmm. that you're going to shop. You know, we could easily run our budget a lot higher, even eating some of the same things that we eat. Like I know there are grocery stores, even though I'm not really our shopper, but like I know that I can go to one particular grocery store and pay three or four times as much as 
another grocery store. Yeah, is it hard sometimes to get certain ingredients? Like there are some things here in Georgia that I just don't find on the shelves like I would in Michigan. But mm -hmm. we adapt our eating habits to those, you know, kinds of things. And we do kind of draw a line when things, when the prices go up, like the price of eggs. Our family can blow through some eggs. I mean. Oh, mine too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My husband does our grocery shopping and he will buy usually once a week the box, like the, I don't know, whatever it is. We'll go through that easily in a week. Yep. But because the price has gone up. We kind of rein it in and maybe instead of scrambled eggs in the morning, we have oatmeal and a lot of it, I think, just comes down to choice and how flexible you are and whether or not you're willing to look someplace else for what you might need. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to YouTube channels that you like to watch. <laughs> what YouTube content do you like to consume? I like a wide variety of YouTube channels. Oh, so Great. What are they? <laughs> I watch very little YouTube in my actual genre. I don't, I don't watch a ton because I just, I don't know. I just, I do it on YouTube. I don't want to keep watching it all the time. Um, I understand I, that really well. I don't watch much cooking food content. That used to be all I watched and I was very inspired. So if you're looking to take this journey, there is content and it will be really good. But I love to watch true crime. I watch a lot of true crime <laughs> on YouTube. I also love like the John Townsend and early American, like a lot of those like reenactor kind of, of Victorian periods. I love to watch that, those kinds of channels too. And I love a good documentary. So like pretty much any, any of that. My husband loves to watch the outdoors kinds of like side by sides and Hatfield and McCoy trails and so I end up watching a lot of that stuff too. And don't, don't tell him, but I actually kind of like some of it every now and then, but don't oh, tell no. him that. <laughs> I won't tell him that. They, they can't be thinking we like their weird videos. I know. Cause then he'll be like, oh, we should watch this together all the time. <laughs> you know, this weird one that Dave found was there's this bay somewhere that's like dangerous cause the waves get really big. I don't know. And boats come in oh, yeah. all the time because there's a marina. I don't even know where it is. It's in you know Miami. It's in Miami. Yes. And he watches the boats come in and they get knocked over and the big boats yep. do okay. But like you're on a jet ski, you're just flipping and then they got to send people out to get you. And he watches yep. that. And I'm like, why? This is so weird. He's like, these people are so dumb. I can't believe they're taking a jet ski out in those waves. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why are you watching it? Let me watch. Oh, <gasps> you know, and then I'm. And, and then I'm you get sucked, sucked in. in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> do you like to read? I do love to read. What are you reading right now? So right now I'm reading a book called Live No Lies by John Mark Comer. And then I'm also, I teach a women's Bible study at our church. So I end up doing a lot of Christian living and Bible studies, things like that. And so right now I'm doing, I'm teaching through the second half of Exodus with a book by Jen Wilkin. I do that for Bible study and then I read the, the other book for myself. <laughs> what about TV? Do you watch TV, movies, any of that? I am not a big TV watcher. I don't know. I used to watch a lot of TV, but recently I just can't find a show that I actually want to stick with. And then mm -hmm. I used to watch a lot of Grey's Anatomy, but then they just mm -hmm. kill off all your favorite characters. Like I couldn't watch Friends with different friends why i couldn't do it so once they get into those kinds of things where they're trying to like reboot things i'm out so i just end up steering clear a lot of tv i about Grey's anatomy specifically <laughs> i watched it in its first run through season 10. oh man. and i lost i lost interest at season 10. and so fast forward all these years later and it's on some streaming service and I, you know, while I do my laundry, I was like, I gotta watch something while I do my laundry. <laughs> so I, I decided to do Grey's from the beginning again. And the first like four seasons were so good. Like, I, I, yes. I forgot how good they were. They how were good so <laughs> good. And then you move into like seven's okay. Eight's okay. And then it starts getting depressing. And then once again, 
I pushed past 10 and I made it halfway through 11 and then I quit again. Yeah. And I you're was like, like, I'm I out. No I can't do it. I'm out. It's not funny anymore. It's not fun anymore. It's all yep. sad. It's all depressing. They brought in new characters that I was like, you suck as a character. I'm not watching you. I typically go back to my old favorites and I just rewatch. I'm working my way through Buffy right now. Again. Oh yeah. That was a good one. Seen it many times. It is a favorite. <laughs> What's your music genre? I love you enjoy? all kinds of music. I love all kinds of music. Country, worship. I love some 90s rap, which yes. I shouldn't. Like, it's so off brand. Oh, you should. Right? It's like, good. No, it's good. I played Run DMC for my son. Oh my and I was like, I think I was asking him if he liked rap. And he's like, oh, they played at school. It's awful. And I'm like, listen to this rap. Kunk. And he yeah. goes, oh, I like it. I'm like, that's all you need a little 90s rap. Yep. That's true. So we just went to Florida a couple weekends ago to visit my mom. And we took our kids to this little, it's called Woody's River Rue. And it is so good. It's right on the water. And it's a, it's a motorcycle bar. I kind of forgot <laughs> that it was a motorcycle bar. Okay. So we show up with our kids. It was that like sweet home Alabama moment where people are looking yes. at you. They're like, you have a baby in a bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there were some other kids there. So we were okay. Otherwise, like we would have left, but they had a cover band that was playing yacht rock. So like Buffalo Springfield and Hall and Oates and our youngest son, Thomas was just like entranced. And so he has been playing all the Yacht Rock on our Echo. He is just addicted. So on your YouTube channel, what is the message that you are trying to get? Are you giving tips? Are you giving hope? Are you giving yeah. personality, entertainment? What are you giving to people there? Well, I'm hoping to kind of give all of those. You know, I want things to be relatable. I think it's really important, especially in the age that we live in, that when people tune in, they see real life. A lot of times I'm not like cleaning up the background so that it looks great. I just want them to be able to jump in and see how things are right now. And sometimes it's great. And sometimes I got a lot of work to do. I hope that when folks come to my channel, they are encouraged in their current circumstances to be able to push forward and to really look to their faith for the why of what they're doing. You know, that's always this big question is what's your why? That's what's going to drive you. And my hope is that by the time they leave that video or my channel, that their why is because they want to deepen their faith because something like that is just going to keep driving them to walk with the Lord and do the things that he's calling them to and just have a sense of joy, even when things are not always making us happy. We talk a lot about mindset and then just practical ways to live out your faith, practical tips, you know, cause we can talk about mindset, but we have to have the actual like to-do list of things to do. So that's really a lot of the focus is just kind of walking it out. Where did the name of your channel come from? At what cost? So Dawn was just kind of the beginning. There were a whole lot of things that happened after that. So our Sunday school class was studying a book on Leviticus. So we're talking all about just the way that families were living and producing everything for their offerings, their, their yearly atonement. And this question, but at what cost? kept coming up. It was like, I have all this stuff, but at what cost? Like I'm doing all of this laundry. What is it actually costing me? And is it worth it? That was the question that I kept answering. And it's still, it's still one that I ask a lot. I ask myself a lot today. Like if I'd make this choice at what cost am I choosing this? It just kind of stuck. I really love that. I think I'm going to start asking myself that when I want to do crazy stuff. We could do this, but at what cost? Sometimes it is worth it. So you have to weigh that for your own personal journey. Sometimes the answer is at great cost, but I'm willing to pay that price. I'm willing to do this. There are some things in our home that I don't necessarily keep super minimal. The books, the books are one of those things. I, do I love, love books. books. 
I love mm -hmm. to read. Okay. I go back, you know, sometimes we read books and we stick them on the shelf and we never look at them again. I read a lot of like topical Christian living books. And so I go back and I read things again, or I want to refresh myself on something. And so I have more books than any minimalist should have, but I have space for it. I'm willing to go light in other areas so that I can go a little heavier in books. So it's that still that idea of like, at what cost am I going to keep these? Well, it may be at the cost of having some closet space or room in our bedroom for a bookcase. I have to sacrifice that spot so that I can keep an extra couple of stacks of books. So it's really that same question of like, am I, is, what's the cost and am I willing to pay it? I think that's and most of the time. budgeting. Like you can have nice things. I never told anybody you couldn't have nice things. As long as it fits in the budget, like you're saying, you've got the room. And I let go of these things so I can have these things. Sometimes we eat super cheap for a couple of weeks so that we go on vacation, we can eat a little bit more lavishly or extravagantly. It's, it's mm -hmm. that, kind of, you know, you have to really like be willing to trade things off and be a little bit flexible knowing that it's not, oh, it's not going to always going to be like this. <laughs> yes, it, yes. Yes. It's not always going to not be, always like, gonna this. be <laughs> like this. That's so true. Some may not know this about you, Mary Beth, but you have quite a sharp sense of humor. Maybe a yes, little. Yes, very, very <laughs> true. Very, absolutely accurate, what I'm saying. I speak the truth. Are people going to find that on your YouTube channel? Is that something that you share with people, your quick wit? You know, not as much as I probably need to. I keep hearing this from folks. I need to try and do this. I get... <laughs> I get so passionate about what I'm talking about and I get so into it and I'm just laser focused and I'm in the zone and I'm like, stop and tell some jokes. Okay. Just chill. Just calm down. Uh, tell some jokes. Uh, Mary Beth. I, I, I know. want people <laughs> to see your great sense of humor. It's something I love about people yeah. when they have a really good sense of humor and you have one and I want people to see that. That's something I have been working myself into more. My background is in adult education and so I oftentimes would be like in front of really tough audiences trying to teach family life education and right out of college, like one month out of college, I was teaching a parenting class for parents who were divorcing. That's a tough crowd. Yes. That's a tough crowd. <laughs> yes. That's and a tough so crowd. There were so many times just through that experience that you kind of put your teacher hat on and you're getting through the material, you're being fun and engaging, but I sometimes get into that mode of like, okay, let's deliver the information. Let's go on this journey. And I don't always take my teacher hat off and inject some of the humor, but yeah, it's on my list. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So if people want to find you online, anywhere online, where can they find you? Yeah. So the best place is really YouTube. So the, it's just at what cost on YouTube. And then I have some links in the about section for my social media accounts, but I am on Instagram and Facebook. And then I have a website too, that has kind of that like central hub, but yeah, I'm mostly on YouTube. And I'll go ahead and put it in the show notes and description of yeah. this podcast episode also so they can find you wherever you are. Last question of the day, because I ask everybody okay. this, you're at the end of your life. It's your last meal. You don't have to cook it and you don't have to do the dishes. What oh. are you ordering? Yeah, I have thought about this. I've given great thought to this now because mm -hmm. I've been asked mm -hmm. this question before. <laughs> so mm -hmm. my, I'm, I'm still solid in my answer though. So I want a okay. homemade fettuccine alfredo with no meat just the alfredo a homemade sauce homemade noodles i want the whole thing like i want it to be really good and then i would have a steak a really good ribeye lots of flavor not spicy because my spice tolerance is milk that's my level mm -hmm. of spice and probably a good caesar salad i like a good caesar salad especially with a steak you know kind of balance things out and dessert, I love a really good cheesecake. Not a frozen, 
you know, with a little like raspberry swirl, but like a good cheesecake. Mm -hmm. But I could honestly be happy with just about any dessert. I'm very flexible. I could, I could be satisfied with a surprise me. Would you prefer yeah. cheesecake over something chocolatey? Hmm. Something yeah, fruity? I probably would. Like, I like chocolate, but it's a little low on the list. As far as food goes, that, it's such a hard call for me because I like so many different foods. So yeah. many. I love excellent tacos. I love oh, yeah. a good steak. Like you're saying, you give me a loaded up burger and some like <sighs> spicy curly fries. I will eat that all day. And then, like you, I love a cheesecake. I love yeah. really thick, creamy, really creamy cheesecake. Yep. But you bring me a uh, chocolate mousse pie. I will eat that all day. Ooh. I love fruity, cobblery things. Yep. Apple crisp, <laughs> like a berry cobbler. Yes. Like, I'll eat all of it. Yeah. I feel like I can't, like, do leftovers tonight now for dinner. That's how I feel most days, and which is why I ended up cooking a lot. People are like, oh, why yeah. do you like cooking? It's because I like to eat. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mary Beth, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and chatting with me today. If you haven't yet, I would love for you to subscribe to the podcast. You can listen wherever yeah. you listen to podcasts or watch via the YouTube channel, Frugal Fit Mom Podcast, if you prefer the video version. Until next week. Bye.